Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. We are now in session. Not good. Okay. Mr. Lang, <coughs> yes, sir. You have the honor. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful day that you have created. And dear Lord, give us the strength and wisdom to take care of the business for the citizens of Alamance County. And dear Lord, we know that all things are possible through you. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Have motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. We only have one speaker, and that is Barry Joyce. I'm handing out what's the... <laughs> Don't fall on county property there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing this morning? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Barry Joyce. <laughs> uh, the uh, a couple of weeks ago, I came to you about the uh, the law enforcement training center, and I went back and did did some research. Of course, I worked in as at Alamance Community College for 10 years, and I handled BLET training, setting up courses and fire service training. So I know quite a bit about what's going on in these programs. And we had uh, the president, interim president, come before me last time and made a comment that he, he didn't have to be sponsored or hired by our sheriff's department to attend BLET. Well, in front of you, you have the Alamance County requirements, Alamance Community College requirements to be a participant in the BLET program. If you look, it's highlighted. You must have a sponsor to verify you, okay, which means a law enforcement agency has to sponsor you. And you have to either be employed by a law enforcement agency prior to going into the class. And I'm not going to go through all these requirements, but it's very stringent requirements to get into this program. Somebody just walking in off the street can't get in BLET. Also check Fayetteville Tech, where I think you was president there for 14 years. First thing you see when you pull up Fayetteville Tech, same requirements. Got to be sponsored, got to be employed. Now, the question is, do we really need a $20 million training center. And, and I still contend that we've been teaching these courses, I know since the 70s, all right? And we've never had anything like this. And, and we did our fire training, uh, our, uh, weapons training down on 54. We did classes in the Sheriff's Department. We did classes at ACC. We did classes at the Police Department. And I just don't, I mean, I'm not, it's nothing against the sheriff. The sheriff's done a great job, uh, you know, but I just think that we got to really think about this. And our pay is not the reason that we're not getting officers because we're one of the highest paid in the state. There's counties with three, four hundred thousand people pay, pay three or four, three hundred four, three or four hundred thousand dollar 
citizens that don't pay what we pay for a detention officer. I mean, right around us, Guilford, Orange. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is if we're paying, the key to keeping these people is paying them to go to the class. And I don't know if we're doing that or not, but I know there's 48 students enrolled in ACC and BLET right now. 46 of those 48 are being paid by the department. They're already hired. So if they're not hired by Alamance County, you're not going to get any of them. You're not going to get a single one. So, I mean, you know, if you, if you, if we pay them, then they have to sign a contract. And I don't know if we have that contract in place, but the contract should be signed that they have to stay with Alamance County for so long. Mr. Joyce, we thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have a motion as to the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Yeah, motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. It's unanimous again. Thank you. Anytime you see a big clip like that, it means that's the consent agenda. That's good. <laughs> Library committee, Ms. York, is that you or who's presenting that? Um, I'm not prepared to present that. Tori, are you handling that one? Oh, I can. Um, we had received two applications from the city of Burlington as a representative for the city of Burlington um, on the library committee. And the two applications that we have received were from um, Aiden, Oralina Alberto and Kia Glenn, and the Burlington City Council has recommended Kia Glenn be appointed to fill that vacancy. Any discussion? Well, I can just say since I'm on the library committee, I spoke with Mrs. Glenn. I called Alberto to leave a, I left a message, but I haven't heard back from this person, uh, Ms. Glenn, was telling me that her family were, her parents were big into the library. She is a parent big into the library. Her kids use the library. She said she just did not want to have to order every book she's got off Amazon. And she thinks it's an important role to be in sight on the library. So she was lovely. I, I would highly recommend her. Like I said, I didn't get a message back from the other candidate, but um, that was on Thursday. I believe I left that and I haven't heard back. So. And after I talked to Ms. Thompson, I called uh, two of the Burlington City Council and they also indicated that uh, that was the individual they were supporting. And uh, I can certainly see why. <laughs> She's very strong in public libraries. Okay, and I also tried to call the other gentleman and did not get a return phone call. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of uh, are you making the motion that we support Ms. Uh, Glenn? Uh, I will. All I would right. like to make that motion. Right I'll now. second it. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor of Ms. Glenn's uh, appointment, signify by saying aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. You're next. I think we all know you, but would you state your name and position? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm Larry Keen, uh, the interim president of Alamance Community College. And I'm uh, pleased to be before you today to share your, our needs with you and to look into the future. And I think the future is quite bright for us if we continue to move forward and, and do the things that I think some forward-thinking people uh, entered into uh, quite some time ago. And I know you've been working on it for quite a while. Uh, but uh, I think the fruition is here if you uh, take the actions we're requesting today. I'm going to ask you for, uh, we're going to uh, ask you to do the uh, final two projects uh, that are remaining. Uh, and quite frankly, the uh, main Powell and G Buildings uh, project will provide nursing expansion, uh, nursing program expansion and simulation labs uh, in the Powell building. 
Uh, as you may know, we were just recently approved for the licensed practical nursing program, which will add to the nursing uh, capacity at different levels. And so, therefore, uh, you know, give you more nursing capability within Alamance County and the region. Uh, it will give us an opportunity to modernize the library in the G building. Uh, it's been moved out into temporary quarters right now and, quite frankly, is in the process of being uh, remodernized. And then modern up-to-date classrooms would be required, um, the tutoring center, uh, computer labs, and technology uh, in a building that's basically about 45 years old, actually older than 45 years old. So it's time. And so uh, the beauty of that is it gives you the opportunity to expand access to other materials uh, that come far beyond what we're capable of doing currently, and at the same time giving a, a, a place <clears throat> pardon me for a uh, study that will I think will enhance the uh, the success of the students that we have the second item is a public service training center uh, and it will provide for BLET growth and it's local and regional uh, law enforcement uh, training opportunities and I heard the speaker earlier indicate that it was just a uh, schedule first of all everybody is not already hired they're not already being paid and they many times do come to you uh, throughout uh, the community and certainly other places as long as they are pursuing uh, the basic law enforcement training program which is a fundamental uh, operation for about which uh, people can be certified uh, and then subsequently hired some of them are sponsored and paid but not all uh, so um, I think that is an opportunity for you, not only with the existing sheriff's departments in the region that will send their people here and they fall under the category the gentleman suggested, but there are other people that will come to you as well. We had a lot of them out of Fort Bragg that would come to us and they were not sponsored necessarily, uh, and uh, they would work on that. So the same thing I, I would see could happen here. Um, the economic growth for the uh, town of uh, Green Level is another opportunity that I think uh, exists uh, over time. And then the uh, fire academy and local first responder uh, training uh, opportunities for people that are not only in fire, but also in uh, uh, EMS and other things as they work in concert with their law enforcement partners as well. So uh, we're currently working on a strategic partnership with the city of Burlington as well. Uh, I will tell you that we moved an aircraft donated by LabCorp out there uh, about two weeks ago, and it is now in place and ready for uh, training for both fire and uh, law enforcement. Uh, and we continue to do that as we move forward. Both projects have faced cost ex escalations since they were first envisioned for the college and the county. Uh, as a result of the uh, furniture fixtures and equipment costs that were written and within the original bu budgets have fallen victim to the construction cost uh, escalations, among other things, uh, as, as you might expect. Both projects are ready to launch. Uh, the main Powell and G buildings uh, are uh, ready to start construction this month, so they are, they're ready to go right now. And then uh, the Public uh, Safety Training Center, the construction manager at risk uh, is bidding, uh, going through bids in October and November with construction that will start in January. So um, as you look at this, it is, it is literally uh, a situation to where uh, you can see that uh, we're moving forward in a variety of ways. When you take a look at the base project um, in green level, uh, the GMP is now in hand. The guaranteed uh, uh, price is now in hand. Uh, it is a uh, project's uh, cost went up slightly, uh, about $21,000 uh, from the last estimate. And the furniture, fixtures, and equipment cost now indicated uh, as a line item due to cons construction cost ex escalation as well. The second item is the firing range. Uh, the state budget appropriated five and a half million dollars for that, and uh, I'd like to express my appreciation to Senator Gailey, Representatives uh, Ross and Rydell uh, for their work on that. This was not an easy year, but they did a wonderful job in uh, bringing that together for Alamance County, and I, I, would, I would be remiss if I did not thank them for their efforts, and so uh, I appreciate uh, all they have done. 
Uh, construction price increases uh, are predominantly due to the increases that were uh, rectified or recognized in a specialized uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning uh, system that is required for the uh, indoor range. And I asked the question, well, why wasn't that identified early on? And then they indicated to us that it was a modification in the requirements that were, that were required. Now, I don't have the detail on that, but that is... Uh, well, when you're, uh, you know, shooting and, and so forth, you want to make sure you're not breathing all the stuff. So the better the HVAC system, the better you're going to be. And then the burning tower, uh, we have to finalize. We're in the process of finalizing that partnership uh, with Burlington right now. And uh, I think we're moving in, a, in a, an expeditious way and, and a good way from my perspective. Um, the main PAL and, and G buildings, um, the... Uh, uh, Public Service uh, Training Center, as you see here, uh, we are thinking that we can uh, actually uh, affect some savings in some ways. So Public Service Training Center is $24,157,164 minus uh, the, the 2021 bond proceeds. Uh, uh, secondly, less approved capital reserves of $2 million and then less the 2024 state budget appropriation of 5.5 .5 million. So we're asking for 16 million, 60,000 and uh, about uh, $787 there. Um, the main pile in G buildings, that was uh, 5 million, 136,070 and less approved capital reserves of half a million and then uh, less the state grants gift funds of a million four. Uh, for 3.2 million and a little bit more. So our total request is for $19,296,857. And uh, the, the truth of the matter is if we can get to that point and uh, make these things happen, not only uh, will we be able to, I think, complete things expeditiously on the Powell Main G and Main G buildings, but also get to a point to where we can actually start uh, moving dirt and doing the things that we need to do at the firing range. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say uh, before I open it questions, uh, if you have any, would be that uh, we have an opportunity in Alamance County. I guess I'm, I'm beginning to believe I'm part of you, and I think I am. Uh, but we have an opportunity to look forward or be stay stuck in the past. And uh, the truth of the matter is uh, we need to move forward in my uh, expectation of what I've experienced being with you now for three months. Uh, this county is a wonderful county. Uh, we were with uh, people that are looking at this county for opportunities uh, about two weeks ago, and they were saying the same things, and these are very notable uh, individuals that we had conversations with. This county has a lot to do and a lot of growth to, uh, to enjoy and a lot of good things coming its way, but we have to be forward thinking if we're going to be a, uh, a part of that. And I, I would recommend to you, and I'd ask your support of our request for $19,296,857. Mr. Chair, that's my report, and I'd be glad to respond to any questions you might have. Thank you. Mr. Hearn. Dr. King, the original... Um, now, part of the original request for, for ACC's bond issuance included uh, ACC East, ACC West. I think each of those was allocated to be five hundred thousand dollars. Is ACC abandoning those those possibilities in this request? Is, do you, are, are you putting all your eggs in this basket so that you don't have any more uh, bond issuance? Requests. These uh, these are the most uh, the, the most forward thinking right now with the state uh, budget we did get for the Dillingham Center a half a million dollars of non recurring funds to get that up to speed. I think some other work will go on in terms of making that recurring. Whether we're able to do that or not yet, I'm not sure. Uh, but it does give you access to a part of uh, uh, Alamance County that uh, honestly I didn't think they'd ever uh, they'd ever support that. Uh, that being other presidents and the state board among others but they did and so uh, that's a good place for us to be right now so it gives you an opportunity to expand operations in those areas as time goes forward but right now these are the dollars we have available to us to do this work and can you just give me a sense of what the purpose of the burn tower is and isn't there isn't there a burn tower now that Burlington uses at its training facility? There is a burn. Uh, it's not a tower. It's a house. Yeah, like a couple uh, stories. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's not even a couple stories. Uh, from what I saw, it was a single story. And what they have difficulties on from time to time is that the roof will catch fire and then burn. 
And uh, what this burn tire will give you an opportunity to do is that it gives you opportunities to work at height to where if you had something here or somewhere else, you know, people would be able to uh, egress in and out uh, of that facility under those conditions. And so you don't have that right now, to my knowledge. Um, I think, secondly, it gives you an opportunity to do some work internally with the, the things that are there in terms of uh, taking people out uh, of burning facilities in different state of, uh, of injury and so forth. Uh, high angle rescue uh, would be a part of that as well. Uh, you just don't have that now. Uh, so it, it really is a significant improvement on what is currently being used and, and discussions with the people in the fire uh, service, uh, they indicate to us that it would enhance their training significantly over where it is now. Uh, would, that, would that be at the Green Level facility or at the Burlington location? Well, you have actually two of them. You have what's called, a, what we call lovingly, a, a, a clean uh, tower. And uh, that's where you do have some burning in there, but that's typically uh, not natural gas, but uh, propane, things like that. But it doesn't certify for the dirty burn tower, which is what you have in place already in Burlington. Uh, you just don't have it at multiple levels, uh, which is what they are required to do if they uh, are going to gain the certifications that they need uh, so consistently. The one that you're asking for now is a clean burn tower? Is that uh, the dirty burn tower is what we're asking for now. For a dirty burn tower. Yes, sir. Which it's about $750,000 all told, uh, and uh, Burlington is uh, doing all the, the city of Burlington, uh, in terms of negotiation, is doing all of the uh, infrastructure there, all the water, as I understand it. I now I've read the, the document that we've seen between each other, all the work, water at no cost, which is a significant <laughs> savings to us. So it's a long-term uh, activity. And then there may be some day in the distant future to where you'd want to do something in another part of the, the uh, county, but right now you don't have the water pressure uh, out in the green level site to accommodate that. So, uh, and it would be, based on everything we've learned, extraordinarily expensive to get it to the point where you could do that at this point. So this is the best of two, uh, two options that you're really looking at. Um, I, you know, if, if you pass this thing today on the Public Service Tra Training Center, you have really placed yourself in a strong place, not only in the state, but in the region uh, to do some great things. And that has the potential in the future for expanding its opportunities as well. But the law enforcement is the major thing right there at this point. Uh, and I mean, you, you'd be an overnight success with that. The Burlington uh, area with the aircraft out there now gives you aircraft uh, firefighting capability that you don't currently have. And at the same time, when you put the burn tower out there, uh, then that gives you an opportunity to do dirty burns uh, that, that they have to do to get their certifications and their requirements. Did I answer your question? I think so. That's uh, the burn tower in Burlington, and that's the burn shack. I just want to give you a visualization. So that's clean burn? They do clean burn in that? I have no idea. I, uh, that, I don't know what that is. Tom, do you know what that is? No, I don't. Uh, that's an example of some I've seen before, uh, and, and some of them typically are, I get older like that and with bricks and so forth. I know in Fayetteville we had to tear one down uh, because of that because, uh, you know, specialized materials go into those with burns and that kind of thing. Uh, the one that we're uh, contemplating is a, uh, is a uh, uh, what do you call it, a... Uh, a metal facility made out of containers, which a lot of colleges and universities are doing that now, adding fire departments are doing that now because uh, it's far less expensive than a $14 million, $13 million uh, concrete and steel facility. Now, you can't do as much with it, uh, perhaps, but by the same token, uh, it, it serves the needs. Made of containers, like the 40 foot containers? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You they, stack them on each other? Well, you stack them together, and they, they, they put them in a configuration that would re, uh, resemble what they would face in a fire. And they can accommodate fire for some time uh, based on those configurations. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Lashley. Um, yes, I, I know we have Davenport here. Uh, Excuse me. Well, I did intentionally hear the vice chair. <laughs> at this point. Well, I wanted to ask uh, him a question that might help the right, conversation go, go that, that uh, Mr. Turner was having. We talked to, with the uh, fire training director 
and he con he was concerned about the condition of the existing Correct. dirty burn tower or dirty burn building over at the over in Burlington. It's falling apart. Very much so. And that that's the reason for needing a new one. Very, uh, they were very, very direct with us in, in terms of that point, and uh, even to the point where they, they constantly have problems, even right. with the roof, and the roof is burned off of it before, from what I understand. And uh, so you're 100% right with your comment. Uh, that was a big concern, at least that was reported to us when we were visiting to, with them. And I, I've honestly, I've, I've been all over the state of North Carolina and the state of Oklahoma. I used to be responsible for both statewide, and it's one of the more uh, basic burn facilities I've ever seen uh, that would serve a community this large. So from my perspective and in my experience, I would say that and I would recommend to the uh, county commissioners to support this effort because um, the last thing you want is somebody who's injured or hurt or killed uh, doing something improperly or and limited by facilities, uh, even in the training efforts. That's why we take so much care uh, even in the training efforts, uh, people can die uh, in these things, and so that's why we're so precise in what we ask for and what we require and uh, the the training that these folks uh, exhibit every day. So who would use the burn tower? Is it ACC plus Burlington Fire, or is it each municipality in the county's volunteer? All through, all through ACC. Uh, and everything would, would flow through ACC at this point. And, uh, and uh, not at this point, everything would go through ACC because they're all integrated anyway uh, in terms of what we do. We get uh, many of our faculty members from the fire departments, uh, both in Burlington, throughout the county as well, and, and in some cases perhaps even through the state, depending on the certifications that are required. So, uh, yes, sir, uh, it would serve not only Burlington but the entire county. and. Uh, uh, you know, I think depending on space availability uh, could be available to others as well. So you mean as you recertify, like if, I, if I'm a firefighter in Burlington, I need to recertify my training. I come to ACC and I get recertification through your program that includes the current time. That's correct. And, and that, that training can go anywhere from the, the uh, beginning to where you're, you're a new firefighter. We had about, I think, 28 or 30 of them out there uh, I alluded to last time they're still there doing their thing but they're green they don't they've not done anything in the past and they're just trying to get their foot in the door and do that and that's, that's everything from volunteer fire departments to the paid fire departments um, and yet when they come through they are required to do so many classes per year in certain categories to not only maintain their certification but to gain additional certifications that gives them more capability uh, in the fire service itself so the, the dirty burn building is what we, we lovingly call it, but uh, the truth is if without one, uh, you're going to have to be hard-pressed to do what you really need to do. And as you anticipate the future, and I've seen a number of the condominiums and apartments around here, they're two and three stories high, it's just a matter of time uh, that you're going to have to have somebody deal with those, and that's what this building will help you do and do it effectively. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lashley. I um, just want to uh, just clarify that the 19.296 million is your request when we uh, go into the bond market for you. Is that correct? Uh, bottom line, that's our total request. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And with that, it uh, gives us, um, uh, let me go back to my notes here and I can tell you, um, we think we can, by doing it this way, that we might be able to save about $700,000. Uh, Tom, what was that? That was on the main G project. Yeah. I'm There's not finding that on my notes here. If you go back to that slide, it was on that slide. <clears throat> Which one? Right there. Right here. Okay. Uh, the reduced scope and uh, the bids we, we anticipate are going to be about $700,000 under budget. So uh, that's what contributed to that final ask we're asking for. I'm good. Thank you. We're trying to trying our best to uh, to be uh, good good stewards uh, of the resources that we're blessed with, and uh, we anticipate. So, 
Um, I can tell you as an interim president, I've been around a long time. I used to do this stuff all over the state of Oklahoma. Uh, you did it all over the state of North Carolina. So I've seen the fanciest to the less fancy, uh, least fancy. And uh, uh, you have at your fingertips here the opportunity to do something special for Alamance County and this region. And I would really encourage you from my perspective to do so. Uh, as as you move forward as a community, it will make a difference in terms of the way people look at you. I have a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me if this uh, facility, if you own the land or if you lease the land? We lease the land. Okay. What's that lease? How long is that for? Forever, uh, basically. The last number I heard, 40 years. Are you asking about uh, green level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a 50-year lease. So there was nowhere you could buy the land, so it would be yours? No, there was not a, at the time of looking at it, there wasn't a place to, to purchase land, no. And the vicinity is close to ACC, that's the deal, right? Correct. Okay. Um, the thing about certification, what Mr. Turner was talking about, if they're not able to get the cert, if they can get this certification with this new facility, where have they been getting their certification? Uh, some will travel other places. Uh, some will go through ACC and they will get it working in concert with uh, probably the Burlington Fire Department or whatever, but it's all engaged with ACC. Some will have to go other places to get any, from what I understand uh, here, any of the, the tower work. So that's that's the purpose of this is to get the tower work. Okay. Um, the volunteer fire department, are they part of the training inside the city now over there near the dog pound, dog, dog, what you call it, shelter? I don't want to insult it. It's really nice. Sure. Are they part of that? Because I mean, I'm from Eli, Eli Whitney, and it's nothing for somebody to say, you can burn my house down in practice. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. I know. It's all well contained. They'll burn you up down there. My dad used to be really bad about waiting until it hadn't rained for six months, and then he wanted to burn the field. They loved it because they got training. Um, That's exactly so right. I'm telling you. So do they come up here to train for they that? They can. Okay. Uh, they can uh, come up and come through ACC and that program. That's that's why I say that they're so integrated with each other anyway. Uh, because is that now or is that the future? That's both. Okay. Um, the When you was talking about the Fort Bragg and, and guys wanting to go into it, well, that's a perfect fit. We've got a former Navy firefighter in here. I'm just saying mm -hmm. over there. Um, is that the GI Bill they use? Because I, I have a question. I need to know what the deal is. Is this true or is this not? About when it comes to sponsorship, verification, verification of employee. Is that an option that they can check if they're being sponsored? Or is that, I, it's just some confusion and I it's, need it's to know what it is. They can come in and, uh, for example, here the sheriff's or police department, uh, they can hire them before the fact mm -hmm. and sponsor them, uh, pay them while they're on, uh, while they're taking class, and uh, and and so forth. Uh, my presumption is they would write a contract with them that they'd have to go back to work for, for them for a period of time. Not everybody does that. Uh, and there, there are some that, that, you know, will go ahead and sponsor them uh, in good faith, and then they'll come back to them when they're finished. Uh, others, especially when they started playing, paying bonuses so big, uh, others jumped ship and went the one that gave them the biggest bonus. So it's been a point of contention in some places throughout the uh, state. Uh, but that's one option. Uh, another option uh, is to be sponsored by sheriff's or police department, but not paid a salary either. Uh, and uh, where where this where the money comes from, both fire and uh, the uh, and law enforcement. Uh, I, I don't want to get too complicated here, but it because it is complicated is that the state has a, a system uh, whereby they reimburse us for doing uh, so much of the training as much as we can legitimately. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, you know, pull very little tuition and fees off that. Uh, we are reimbursed for those costs, and that's the state, that's the taxpayers of, of North Carolina that do most of that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and, and contrary to public opinion there, if you have an interest uh, in becoming a firefighter or a law enforcement officer, you may go to those places, gain entry, and then once you go through certain uh, things to demonstrate that you're serious about it and you're capable, then you can gain entry. Okay. I won't, um, and the HVACs, all of a sudden now this situation matters, whereas before it didn't, as far I, as your cost elevation, I mean, I know how this world works. Is that, 
is kind of like uh, what kids used to breathe in school before COVID was not that major of a deal. But after COVID, everybody's HVAC's got to be replaced. And you know what that looks like. It's a situational crisis. America's got that going down really good. We, we've got it really well everywhere. And so uh, I will tell you this, is that when you're, when you're uh, popping off significant rounds of, of ammunition, uh, everything from... Uh, the chemicals that are in the gunpowder to the other things that you're you're dealing with, uh, not to mention lead or, or steel mm -hmm. flying down, and then recovering that, all of it mounts up. And so I asked the same question you did: Why wasn't this calculated early on? And I can't answer that question. And I, you know, I, I got an answer, but I don't know if it's it's adequate. But uh, uh, the truth of the matter is, is that to ensure the safety of the people that we're putting out to keep us safe. It's just the best way to do it uh, at this point. That way you won't have it come back later on after something is built and then have a requirement put on you that then all of a sudden comes a million and a half dollars as opposed to what it is now. And, and this airplane, is it located in Burlington? Yes, ma'am. Will it be moved? No. It, uh, our welding department went out and uh, put it uh, put it together. I don't know if your son was a part of that or not, but he wouldn't tell me. They he's, were well, so. I think he's in the CIA. Uh, I don't think he's in the CIA. I think he's a, I think he's a spy. That's, that's go way, ahead. I'm that's kidding. the way a lot of those guys work. But uh, <laughs> uh, they were delighted to go out and put the foundation together to where it mm -hmm. would be a safe place which people could train. So it's in place now. It is not movable. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, working with Lab Corps, uh, they were wonderful. Uh, and uh, first of all, donating it, and then uh, the people at the fire department and our staff at ACC working together. Uh, it was a team effort uh, well beyond what you'd ever imagine, and um, they just did a magnificent job putting that thing together. So it's there now, but it is stable. It's, it's stationary. It will stay there. Well, I'm just curious because I'm hearing about all these dirty fires. I mean, all fires are nasty, if you ask me, but that ain't what you're talking about. Um, it just seems like we're still going to be kind of split. You're going to have one thing in Burlington and all this other stuff in Green Level. And I, I'm thinking the goal is to have everything in one located site, it, the best case scenario, right? Well, it would, in, in one way, yes, and another way, no. And here's why. Uh, you mentioned you live in Eli Whitney. Uh, I drive through that periodically when I'm coming and going. And, and I know what you're talking about. It's, it's more of a rural area, beautiful, but, but rural. They um, have a family dollar, so watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably drive by Walmart that family. Walmart of Highway 87. That's all I, I'm well, going to say. Well, that, I drive right by it every every time I come and go. Uh, and I'm not saying anything against family dollar. Uh, so Don't. Anyway, uh, but the point being is uh, you're right. I mean, to get volunteer fire department people from that area to another, which they typically have gainful employment in the first place, uh, and you have to go all the way to green level or, or in this case, all the way to, to for, for uh, dirty burns, which when, when I say dirty burns, I mean wood, I mean hay, I mean everything where they put their uh, personal protective equipment on and they go in there, you can't see, you can't breathe, and there's heat, there's real heat. Yeah. And so that's what they're going through. Uh, so it, 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 if you just had it in one place, you may have a situation where people could not travel uh, to take advantage of that uh, training at a reasonable time to them, even on the weekends when they try to, you know, either spend time with their families or they're they're pulling their duty, and and so the insurance cost associated with that, if they can't get enough people trained or they can't maintain, even that uh, that volunteer fire department uh, roster, if you will, so they can respond, it could cause the insurance costs to go up. So I think, in many ways, you're better off having having two sites because you can do different things at either site. And at the same time, uh, you know, you've got so much, and, and Burlington seems to be a, a place of where a lot of people go for different reasons. Uh, and so um, just, it's not unusual, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's just right now the best we can do with what we have. Okay. And one other question, uh, Chairman Baisley. I would just like to ask our sheriff when it comes to this, this work sponsorship or whatever this is, um, are, as a lot of these folks that are going to BLET training, are they already on your payroll? Just you. I can't, you know, answer for never, never before have we done it recently. We started doing it simply because we are 60-some people short. Okay. And what does that are they signing a contract? Because I don't they, want to tell anybody they where they got to work. That's right. their business. But what's the length of that contract? 
Do what now? How long is that contract for? Like if we put you, put all this training into them, how long do they, are they supposed to stay with you? I believe you? we just increased it, but I don't know right now exactly how long we, we got. Like at least a year? No, more than Okay. Because, it, and then, you know, I got Kurt Puckett to come and speak to our group one time, and I don't think anybody has any idea what it takes to get an officer on the road with a car and all the other money. stuff. Yeah, and uh, it's like so many other agencies in our county, we seem to be a great training field, and then they go, which is their choice. I'm not ever telling anybody where they need to work. They need to work where they will be the best they can be. So, okay, I'm good. Ma'am, if I may uh, respond to your question, uh, we experienced it in Fayetteville when I was there. Uh, we had some people that, in good faith, uh, went out there and they'd sponsor these guys and they'd go in there, guys and gals, and they'd go in there and they'd train and they'd graduate and so forth. And they did that for years and years and years and there was never a contract. And uh, it was a good faith effort on their part and the, the student. Uh, and uh, about three years ago, four years ago, that's whenever a dramatic shortage started throughout the entire country due to a variety of reasons, as you may know. And, and so um, uh, we had our sheriff get mad at us because we graduated the class as we should have. We actually had two cl cl classes graduating. Uh, and then some of those people that he had sponsored jumped to the police department because they paid a, a significant bonus. And I asked a question. I said, well, did, you, did you have any contract with them? Because that's not in our bailiwick. Ours is do the training, uh, not, not the rest of it. And uh, the answer was no. Well, he has one now, uh, and he, he uses it. So more and more people are doing that. Uh, I know some of them that will require a two-year contract. Some of them don't require that. Uh, but uh, you hope that the integrity of the people that are engaged in that are, are loyal enough to the people that sponsor them to where they'll go and, and continue to work. And you're right, it is, it's work. It is not an easy thing where you just show up and you do it and you're, you're certified. You really have a lot of things that you have to do to uh, qualify to go into these uh, services, whether in law enforcement or in the fire. Okay, say if me and Lashley want to be <laughs> Stabler and Benson, okay, on law and order. And, you know, we, in our minds, we'd be great. We, can we just call you up and say, we want to be law enforcement officers because we watch Law and Order and we think we got this. Do we have to be sponsored or can my affluent stockbroker over here pay for both of us and we go down there? I mean, how does that work? I'm, I mean, I want to know how this works because there's sure. some confusion in this. You, uh, you could call, and we would talk to you, and we would go through a qualification process. And no, you don't have to be on somebody's payroll, or you don't have to have the sheriff's department uh, paying for you. You can get in uh, in other ways, uh, but we do go through a, 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 you know, a information process and selection process to make sure. Now, we will try to connect you uh, with somebody, uh, such as the sheriff or other people, uh, to make sure that there's integrity throughout the process. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, but if, if we we pay, we and we pay full price for our own selves. We're not obligated for Alamance County or Caswell County. I mean, we can go anywhere. You can go anywhere to you want to go if you pay for Ready? it. Ready? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just asking. I'll just be I'll be confusing. gone by the time you uh, you make you application. Uh, just let me know. <laughs> I'd like safe. to come see that. You know, it would be interesting. I'm sure. I will tell you. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I will tell you this uh, that with law enforcement and mm -hmm. and fire, um, uh, I've been out uh, over the many years now watching what those people have to do, and we have soldiers out of Fort Bragg can't pass a physical test. Well, I don't think I'm going to do the physical test. I'll not many, that. not many of them, but, but there are some that can't that can't pass it. And they, it's the entirety of the time that they're in. It's not just once. It's the entirety of the time. So, it's a it's a legitimate program. And if someone really has an interest in that, there will be a way found for them to get into it and get involved. But they don't all have to be hired by the sheriff's department or police department. Well, it needs to be hard, and it needs it, to be it is everything hard. possible because it will only get harder. I, I, I can't speak to this group, but I will speak to the group that I'm more familiar with. We had people with master's degrees uh, graduating <laughs> with that program. We had people with baccalaureate degrees, associate degrees, some of them two and three uh, baccalaureate degrees that decided they wanted the adventure and, and the opportunity to serve, and that's what they came to do. We had students out of high school that would go over there and do just what I alluded to earlier that they had a real interest in it and wanted to be a part of what they uh, did with their career. As a result, they went in and uh, they were uh, they were found and, and introductions made 
uh, that uh, you know helped them succeed throughout that program. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Horner. <clears throat> Oh, okay. I knew I had a question. <laughs> it got back to me. Okay. Um, one, not a question as much as a comment. One of the other things we learned, uh, I happened to serve on the, as a, a trustee of the college and, so, and I'm on the building and grounds committee, so I've been in a variety of these meetings. And one of the things we learned from the fire training, what's, I can't think of the young man's name that is uh, over fire training. Uh, Matt. Matt. Okay. Um, he told us that what we really probably at some point, this is not on the, on the, in planning right now, but what you're dealing with with volunteer fire departments is that if you take a team out of a fire department, which is usually the crew that might be on call that day, and put them in training, and they have to drive from uh, snow camp, Clefsonville, whatever, to the center, and then they get a fire call. If if that call, the if if the respondents to the call are from other agencies and not from the fire department that covers that age that district, then the they keep a track of who shows up, and if they don't have representatives from the agency that's or the district, it can have a negative impact to the people. In their district on their property tax or property insurance rates so one of the one of the things they're concerned about is making sure that they always have a complement of their people in the location so at some point as we grow and as traffic in particular in the rural parts of our county gets even more difficult we're going to probably have to look at additional burn towers for training locations so these folks can come off where they are, but be in proximity to where they might need to respond to an actual fire versus being in the training situation. So, Mr. Carter, you're exactly right. Uh, we work with Mr. Causey, who is the state fire commissioner, uh, as well as the uh, state fire marshal, uh, and they are both intimately involved in what we all do in, in fire service in the community colleges. And your comments are right on target because that's exactly why they do that and, and why we stay so intimately involved with each other because it's a big deal. Uh, you know, the fire insurance rates, among other things, they need to be, uh, you know, reasonable for where they are and what they do, but they need to be reflected. The other thing that you, you uh, I failed to mention earlier and you just reminded me of is that with volunteer fire departments right now, they're having a hard time getting people because of the very reasons we've been talking about. And so this gives another opportunity to get people uh, into those roles uh, to do the work that needs to be done so desperately. And the protections and, and the readiness at, the, at, a, at a moment's notice of people to serve, whether it's a paid fire department or one that is volunteer uh, in nature. They're all extraordinarily important, and we all need to do this to make sure that we protect ourselves and our families effectively. Not to Back during budget time, that's a comment we heard from just about, I think, every fire chief we had in the county was that trying to find volunteers today is a lot more difficult than it used to be. It used to be uh, young people would jump into that, and uh, the farmers, we had more farmers working out there that uh, would... Uh, be a part of the volunteer because they could leave the farm and come back. It wasn't they weren't at a, a mill job or a manufacturing job someplace or whatever, and they, they could get away and deal with the fire and come back home and or come back to wherever they were working. So That's right. it's not as easy to do that anymore. Just one more thing, I'm asking Ms. Payne. We talked about <coughs> possible sponsorships for BLET or not. Is that the same with fire? Because when I go by the yeah, ACC there, 54. I know I was just in Memphis, they did have sponsorships once they mm -hmm. went through the academy, they were on the problems with John and the fire department. The uh, slide that um, Bruce pulled up, there is a three or four story training building right. at the training grounds over there. It was constructed in the early 90s by the county and the city of Burlington. The county put in $500,000 to construct that complex. And we've been paying maintenance fees every year since then, $15,000 per year for maintenance utilities and the contract. I'm going to call it matured in 22, 
Um, and that was on a year by year basis as far as upkeep. Um, the burn tower, I think, in the initial stages of the construction process here was scheduled to go to green level. But with the infrastructure and the water issues, I think that's why they want to move back to the city of Brown. Now, to touch on your question about volunteers coming from snow camp, um, probably not unless it was specialized training. They make sure their district was covered because if the district's not covered, it will affect the insurance ISO rating when they come back and be rated on a five year schedule. But are they certified? Do they go to places <coughs> like yes, under yeah, volunteer they, training? They can do a lot of their training in house through ACC, um, but specialized training with a tower, they will utilize that. Um, they, uh, everybody's got to have 36 hours per year through the state. A lot of departments require more. And I think that's where the volunteer status has diminished because a lot of people live here, but don't work here in the county, and they, they don't have time for training. Those trainings at night time after hours, and they got kids playing sports, um, further schooling for their jobs or training. So the, the volunteers, they're, they're dwindling away quicker than we'd like to see. Yeah, we heard that when they were talking about the fire checks and stuff, how short they were. Right. The fire doesn't stop, does it? No. The, uh, the, the dirty room, as he called it, it was the one-story room up there, and it is in bad shape. They used to use the tower for repelling. I think they had some injuries. They used to have a big net outside. They had injuries in the past, um, and I think they may just like set wet straw on it now just for the smoke effect, not necessarily a, a live burn training for that. Again, I'd I think, like to acknowledge uh, that uh, to the sheriff, we really appreciate the contracts. If we're sponsoring and paying, I sheriff's Department, county, whatever, those contracts are essential. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, they're not typically paying for the tuition. Uh, we're we're taking that on uh, through the entire state. But if they're sponsored by them, they could be very well on their payroll for uh, as trainees for a period of time. So it's really a good program uh, and it's modeled throughout the country in terms of the way we do that. So uh, we just request your support uh, on this. It's an opportunity for us to really move forward uh, as a community and as a county. And uh, I think once you do that, then you have the ability not only to do the entry level stuff, but the intermediate and potentially the advanced things that are, are necessary uh, so much anymore. And I'm just, not gonna ask you to step down, but I'm gonna ask Davenport to come forward and give us some of the options that we should be considering. Mr. Chairman, may I ask one question? Oh, absolutely. Is the plan to, to demolish the clean burn tower or to keep it up? Keep it up. Maybe two. Yes, sir. Uh, you'll have the clean burn tower that can be used for BLET as well as uh, uh, fire and rescue with certain types of training that they do out there for that. But it'll 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 stay up. Does the plan include? I think you said there were some roof issues with the clean burn. Does the plan include uh, monies to fix that? Or not? There are no no roof issues with the clean burn building that will be built. The roof you issues with the, are with the, with the, the one, one in Burlington. Story. I see. Yes, okay. sir. I'm with you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. And while he's walking, Sheriff, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry is, is, do you have a section in your budget <coughs> that is for sponsorship? <coughs> I know, I'm sorry. Okay, is there part of your budget that you allot money for any possible sponsorships? Pass that down the plan. We have, can we use some money? Yes, that's in our budget, but a lot of times we don't pay full salary. Okay, gotcha. Them. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Thank okay, you, we're not excusing you, we're just bringing Mitch <laughs> forward if uh, possible. Where would you like me to stand? Back there? <laughs> <laughs> That's your choice. I wouldn't leave. Commissioners, <laughs> well, <I'm> <laughs> we have Ted Cole here. Uh, we have Ted Cole here from Davenport to help walk us through some options, and we'd need some direction from the board in terms of the resolution that we'd bring back at your next meeting to set the par amount that we would that we would borrow. But I think we need to give you some direction as to which options we would like to take. Uh, Ms. Shork, is that correct? Yes, Ted's going to walk us through the various options that you have and the uh, par amounts that you could consider borrowing, as well as the impact on the debt service that you would incur depending on which level of 
borrowing you want to go with. And That's right. Thank you. But technically, we don't need any official action from we don't you need all until your next meeting. This is October 16th. Right. Bonds are being sold on October 31st. That's the day where the interest rates will all be locked in. And about two to three weeks later, we'll close, and that's when you'll get the funds. Um, all of you should have a, a PowerPoint in front of you there. Page numbers in the bottom right corner. Um, you've gotten some more updated information this morning that when, what, than what we have here, but I think the information will still be relevant to you. Just, just a little bit of a refresher. Um, you know, the referendums were approved in 2018. It was 150 million for the GO school bonds and 39.6 million for the community college bonds. Back in May of 21, um, you issued 130. 0.485 million of the school debt and 20.665 million for the community colleges. So you did not exhaust the authorization in 21. Um, the project budgets at the bottom left of this page are outdated, right? Um, they're based on earlier estimates. What you received from the community colleges this morning um, have been updated for actual costs, it sounds like, and their request, as you all noted, is. 19.296 million. But I do want to talk about that chart in the upper right. So look under the community college bonds for the time being. What the voters authorized was 39.6 million. You've issued against that 20.665 million. So technically, you have an authorization, a remaining authorization from the voters to issue 18,935. That's how much. You, you could authorize to move forward to sell on October 31st, 18.935 million, but you could also authorize something less if that's your choice, right? That's, that's page where we number are. number three column here, is that correct? Page two. Page two. On the right-hand side, upper right-hand side where it says community college bonds, the what's called the current remaining authorization as of today what you could issue is 18.935 million what we thought we would be issuing is 15.79 million based on prior estimates that doesn't appear to be adequate based on the numbers that were shared here okay so what's important on this page is you have the ability to authorize up to 18.9 million of debt for the community colleges, okay? So take that and look at the next page. And what I would suggest just to, to start is you look at option three. Um, that is the scenario where you would issue the 18.935 million. Let's say you got to that place where that's what you wanted to do. <coughs> In the current interest rate environment, as of um, last week, rates have gone up a little bit since then. But in the current environment, what that would have given you is $19,662,000 for your project. Now, that might seem odd. It's because of the way municipal bonds are priced and you get premium pricing. All of that is just the way the bond market works. You can't control that you would definitely get 18.9 million, but there's a chance you might get a little bit more than that. And as of last week, our estimate was you would actually get about $19.6 million. But this has nothing to do with the five plus a little bit of money that five million that the state just gave us, right? That's totally separate and apart from, um, from this. From this. Mm -hmm. Now their request of 19, point, I'm gonna round up, their request of 19.3, does take that five and a half million into account. That's my understanding. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. So they would like 19.3 million on top of all that other funding that has been identified for these projects. So 19 then plus the five million. Wow. Okay. Plus some other funding, some capital reserves and state grant for a SCIF grant for Maine, Powell, and G. There's a number of funding sources, but from these bonds, their request is $19.3 million. And does that mean that they have a balance zero with the bond, so to speak? Well, they spin out. 
it, 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 it will depend on what the market is when you sell your bonds on the 31st. But I mean, they're getting pretty close to More or less, all yes. sales are final. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're getting very close. At that level of funding, you're going to need, based on current market, you're going to need to sell most all of what's left. So if that's what you decide you want to fund, it will, it will uh, eat into the most, if not all, of the remaining authorization from the voters. What was voted on. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And, and in, in today's market, again, that option three, that $18.9 million of voter authorization would give you about $19.6 million of dollars for the project. So it actually is a little more than they're asking for. So you could downsize that a little bit. Again, if you said we are supportive of $19.3 million, you probably could end up issuing about 18.8 .8 million of the bonds. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a very small amount of authorization left that would just expire, would go away. You wouldn't go back and issue that again by itself. And the bond is finished. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the community college bond is finished, right. not the schools. Oh, the schools yeah. still have 19. about 19 million. That will be good for seven years from the date of the vote. So, what is it, 25? Mm -hmm. and, and what I want to show you under option three, if you keep going, I'm on page three. Um, the current interest rate environment of last week had a, what we call a true interest cost of a 391. So just under 4%, might be around 4% <coughs> now because we saw some further market increases last week. The maximum annual debt service on that loan would be about a million eight sixteen, um, which is lower than what we have been running in our models. So the takeaway there is, if you were to decide that you wanted to issue that amount of debt, the model can afford it. There is enough cash flow in our capital planning model for the community colleges where you can make that annual payment and and still have surpluses. So it works within the model for what we call debt affordability because we were using a 5% interest rate when we put all of these models together. And so we're a bit below that still, which is good. That's where we wanted to be. So the question will be what, you know, how much money do we want to provide to the community college? And then our limiting factor is we can only issue up to 18935 And right now, we can give you $19.3 million, if that's the number, for $18.9 million. But if markets move, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, we got a month before you sell the bonds. When Are you we? We would, we're helping facilitate that sale. So we'll, we would set this up where the the underwriters would bid on it in that regard, that, that we want X dollars when we close, and we have a limiting factor of what the, the, the voters have approved us to, up to 18.9. So that's really what I think we need from you all, is guidance on how much money do you want to net from this bond sale. All right, since Ms. Thompson started out, Mr. Lashley, I'll call on you second. Well, the question is pretty simple. 18.935 is the number. I mean, we can't go any any higher than that. So it doesn't make any difference if we could get any more money. Uh, the only thing I would like to point out, by like looking at these numbers, we're not getting, the Alamance County taxpayers not getting a break here. We got the state of North Carolina, gave us five and a half million dollars that we didn't know we were gonna get. This doesn't help the taxpayer. I'm not talking to you, sir. I'm just I know that's not your, right? Not your, but I'm just making a statement that we're not getting a break here. We're just spending more money, seven million dollars, if I, my numbers are correct. And I don't quite understand that. I mean, I just don't understand why the school system believes that that's the best way to go. I mean, do we not get any break for a state come out of the gate? Last week, extra five and a half million dollars. Why doesn't Alamance County taxpayer get a break on that? They just get they just get more spending. Why can't we knock this month, this number down from eighteen point three nine, and subtract five and a half million dollars now? At least let the Alamance County taxpayer get a break here, instead of spending seven million more dollars that you didn't know you were going to have. 
Well, you didn't know you were going to have it. Well, you have two other options here, which yep. we've not discussed. We have not discussed, and and but that doesn't help me. They're they're they are set up to fund. <laughs> $15,790,000 for projects, which is what we were using as the estimate of what was needed back in, you know, April, May timeframe. So at that time, based on the estimates that were being provided for these projects, the thought was, hey, we're going to need to issue $15.79 million of debt. So that's obviously evolved. But under those scenarios, um, an option one, column B, to, to net you $15,790,000, we would only need to sell about $15.2 million of bonds. So we would be leaving some voter authorization out there for future consideration, roughly $3 million. Option two is let's issue $15.79 million of bonds, but that'll actually give us a little over 16. So it, these are just trying to give you some perspective of you know, different ways that you can manage. The, the, the net discussion, though, again, the, the key takeaway at some point will be we know we can only issue up to 18.935 million. That's a known. That's going to be a parameter we have to live by when we sell the bonds. The question is how much, um, how much money do you want to net out of that to provide to them for projects? And Mr. Lashley, continue with yours. Oh. I'm just making a I'm just making a point that I'm sure that everybody who looks at these numbers can see it. It's it's glaring. Mr. I mean, we didn't know you didn't know you were going to get five and a half million dollars last week this time, Mr. Chairman. May I make a comment, please? Uh, yes. What we're dealing with is cost escalation. Mm -hmm. But it's it, the project has gone up more. I, I'm, than not the gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you any sympathy whatsoever on that because they've had five years. This bond was passed in 2018, and ACC wasn't ready to go with it. And now here it is five years later. We're coming up on a five-year, and this doesn't, not just ACC, this ABSS as well. They haven't actually done what they said they were going to do when they told the voters they wanted this money five years ago. And here we are five years later. Now, if you guys were ready, when we went to the bond market to start with, you how much money you would have saved the taxpayer if ACC was ready to do what they told the voters that they were going to do? Then I just can't quite understand how you think like this. If you were a normal company, you wouldn't be thinking like this at all. You would have been ready to go when the bond was passed, and you would have went, when we went to the bond market in 2021, ACC would have been ready to go. Here it is three years later, and you're costing the Alamance County taxpayers more and more money. As everyone can see, we could have got out of here at 15-3, but now we're not. And what is so depressing about that is you did not know you were going to have this money last week this time. But yet, now that you do, you're going to use and spend it, and you're going to spend my taxpayers' money, too. You could have saved us a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort. That's all I'm saying. And I don't think you have to have a Ph.D. in education to figure this out. Mr. Lasher, you're exactly right. I can't speak to what's happened in the past. What I can speak to is the diligence mm -hmm. that the people have exhibited going through this thing getting it ready so it can do exactly what you're saying that is move forward now and i think that's what you are faced with at this point in terms of your decision do you want it to move forward and move into the future or do you want to continue on and have it have it delayed this is a great thing for the uh, county of alamance I, I really believe that and guaranteed by by no means were we guaranteed five and a half million dollars last week mm -hmm. but we we're a pretty darn good Story, uh, story, because we were working with our, not just our own uh, dele delegation, but others uh, as well to get support for what we were trying to do. And so, when you look at Alamance County at 100 and some, 70 some odd thousand people, um, and you mentioned the the taxpayers of the state of North Carolina. Uh, then there are a whole bunch of other people out there supporting our belief in what we do and, and how we are going to provide for those safe roads, safe communities, and safe buildings out there, whether it's public, private, or, or whatever it might be. So I understand your frustration, believe me. I really do ask the same question you asked when I first got here and got involved in this, but we've been able to navigate it to this point where they, we're ready to go, and with your approval, 
we'll move forward. And so, um, you know, the, the uh, Public Service Training Center total project cost, if you look at the total project cost, was $24,157,000. When you take a look, uh, you know, your remaining bond proceeds, minusing that out at 596000 plus, uh, less previously approved, uh, previously approved reserves of $2 million. And then the state budget allocation of uh, five and a half million, that takes it down to sixteen million sixty thousand dollars seven hundred and eighty seven cent uh, seven hundred eighty seven dollars. Where it gets back to the to the eighteen point nine and the uh, uh, you know ultimately the nineteen point two nine six is we add back into it the main, the PAL, and the G total project cost. So that's making up a significant difference in there for the total of $19,296,857. I share in your frustration in terms of speed. Uh, I really do. But, uh, you know, I can't, I can't speak to that right now. But what I will guarantee you we'll do is that that's going to go back to our processes and our people that will be here after I leave, and we are going to do a better job of doing exactly what you have suggested in the future and being more prepared when before we get into the thing. But keep in mind, we're limited. It's just like the, the guaranteed minimal uh, project cost right now. I mean, till you get through literally people who are educated and trained to do this and do it on a daily basis, it's difficult for us to just pull a number out of the air and then have it, any confidence in coming to you and making very significant requests. So once again, I'd, I'd ask for your, uh, for lack of a better word, forbearance on this one and help us get to the point where we can move forward. I'm going to do my best to make sure this doesn't happen again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. King, can you update the board? Is there still a possibility of getting a federal appropriation for any component of this project? There is still a possibility of that. Uh, as you all know, the budget has not been uh, passed yet. Uh, I don't ever trust it until I see it come in. Uh, right now, mm -hmm. we are still in the budget, but I can't guarantee that that is going to come with us. I have high hopes and high expectations, but right now, that's all I'm basing it on. Mm -hmm. any but idea? it looks good. Any idea of the amount? Uh, right at five point six million. Uh, I don't have the exact number. Do you recall? Just something to keep in mind. And we do have options one and two, as opposed to option three, which really takes into account most of that five million, five point five or five point six million, which is why I keep pointing that out. Yeah. So, Mr. Turner. Well, uh, a number of things. If, if we um, if we do have the benefit of some federal dollars, that's going to come after our bond issuance. Right. Um, I mean, can you can you can you obtain the bond monies and then pay a significant chunk of it back if you um, get federal dollars? That it, it, it's quickly? difficult to do that. These bonds are sold with a ten-year no prepayment um, parameter. That's very standard. So, if you did get more money and you wanted to pay them down, you have to put them in like an escrow account until, and they're sitting there until the 10 year horizon comes and then you use them to pay down the debt. So you can apply money to pay them down, but it'll take 10 years before they can be actually paid down. So we would have those funds invested until we could use them for that purpose? Yes, they'd be, they would be invested, um, maybe limited to what the borrowing rate was because you can't earn more, but they could be invested and <coughs> when you hit the 10-year anniversary, they're used to pay down the debt. Well, I don't think the federal government's a model of efficiency to allow us <laughs> to make <get laughs> the determination on that at this point. Um, uh, how much does it cost to borrow the money? I, I don't see that. That cost I think what we've got built in is about three hundred thousand dollars total cost. For issuance. Does that cost of issuance? Does that go on top of the borrowing, or is there are there funds to cover the issuance it, inside the capital plan? It's it's from the borrowing, and we when when you're looking at our line three of page three, we've netted those cost of issuance out. So that's, this is what you would get for the project after the issuance costs are paid. After the issuance, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Correct. Um, does this, does this um, plan, where is ACC's capital reserves after this plan, assuming it's implemented? I mean, does, does their plan go to zero, capital reserves go to zero? No. no. I think the, maybe the most current number we can give you is the close of 23. 
which I think it's sitting at about $3 million, $3,053,000. If you're trying to find that, it's, you're, it's, you know, look at page six for an example. Under column P is in Paul, and you look at 2023, which is the, the fiscal year we just closed, and the ACC capital reserve is shown as $3,053,000. That's, that's where it sits today. That means that's money they have access to, to use for capital projects? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I mean, you know, as I'm looking at these numbers, the, the request is 19.3. The, the amount the voters have, has authorized is 18.9. I, I see a, a gap of... Three hundred sixty-one thousand eight hundred fifty-seven dollars. Um, Isn't that the premium we're talking about? Well, that—that's how you would get it under option three. Right. I mean, what what this requires is the issuance of premium to fill that gap. I'm suggesting that we don't, um, and that and that the issuance be what the voters approve. That what, yeah. what we take. What you take is what voters right. approve. Right. You I can't control that you don't get the premium, but you can downsize Correct. the bond issue, the par amount, right. to land on a specific number. Right. Now that does short ACC three hundred and sixty-one thousand eight hundred fifty-seven dollars. They also have some money in their capital reserves. Uh, I'm just wondering if that might be a place to land. Uh, I also think it's important to note that that under this plan, that if we if we as Pam mentioned, exhaust the bond issuance for ACC on this. There are other projects that ACC is not going to do that were part of the plan. The ACC East is gone. The ACC West is gone. I think the um, there are some additional improvements in main power and G buildings that they were wanting to do that they're not going to do, at least under this plan, because there's no money left. Um, so they are taking a hit, I think, um, that, that sort of the increases in um, in costs or, or it, it does create a hit to what they're asking for. Um, so that's that's what I'm that's those are sort of things that I'm thinking at the moment. Without you don't need a motion <laughs> from us today, is that right? That's right. We that's, just that's, those are my need those some are my direction. Thoughts. And and no, no, need just direction to what he's looking for. Yeah, one right. more thing, not not to complicate it, but I think it's important that we're talking about this. But when that bond closes and that money is waiting to be spent, it's earning interest as well. Say that again? The bond money, when the bond closes, it's sitting in an account earning interest. So that is okay. additional dollars. Now, we don't know. It'll depend on how quickly it's spent, what the interest rates are, but there is earnings on those bond monies while you're paying contractors. Mr. Horner. I don't think I have any additional questions. I, I will make a comment, though. The school has been very, very frustrated. I mean, I, I haven't, I wasn't on the Board of Trustees when this project was initiated, but I've been on it now for a little over a year and uh, served on the Building and Grounds Committee during that time and the Finance Committee, and we've been very frustrated. Uh, the conversations I've had with my fellow trustees has been, has, has demonstrated a level of frustration in dealing with changes that occurred and whether they would get the land, how much the land was going to cost, whether it would be sold, how, finally negotiating a lease, and then, then another uh, layer of difficulty was added in when the, uh, when, uh, the uh, owner of the property wouldn't release a copy of their soil survey, and we had to turn around in the last minute and get our own soil survey. Uh, to, 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 to move the project forward, so it's it's been a laborious project, a laborious project. Ms. Short, do we need to give some direction at this point? It would be helpful for us to have an amount in mind. You do not have to take a vote, but we'll prepare a resolution that will come back at your next meeting for a vote with the amount that the board intends to borrow. And that would be on the 16th. Correct. All right. um, Chairman Paisley, one second, please. I'm sorry. Um, when I hear about this this gift from the state of North Carolina, that that's really amazing. And I think that gift needs to be part, like a minus, <laughs> of this big amount that we're looking at. This is becoming like another situation, like another Barbie dream house. I am all about ACC getting what they want. I'm all about any of our agencies and any of our places and this. But what I'm hearing that you're going to have to scrap other parts that are really academic and that kind of thing. It's just becoming a monster. And it's late 
which is just, you can't help it with COVID and God bless COVID. I, I just have this sinking feeling that this never ends. This never ends. And, and that's just my opinion. When you get $5 million plus that kind of gift, that needs to come off the top, not add to it. That's just the way I feel because I just, like Mr. Lashley was talking about, it's just, it's constantly more and more and more. We're looking at another situation. <clears throat> it's just going to be unbelievable. But um, nothing against my community college. They rock. They're amazing. But this particular project has become just its own individual. It's just, it's just unbelievable. We don't own the land, and I guess that's the way business does nowadays, and that's just what it is. But I don't know. I just don't, I just don't have a good feeling about this. I'm just one, and it's, I just need to say that. When you get $5 million just here, thank you. Use it wisely. And, but don't add to the cost of some. It's just gotten out of control. That's what I see it. And if it's because of expenses and we can't help that, it's one thing. But the way I'm looking at it, it I don't have a good feeling about this at all. And like I said, I'm just one of five. That doesn't matter. But I, I just, I don't know. I'm sitting here about to have heart palpitations thinking of this kind of money. And it just, it's just not sitting well with me. Not you, dude. You're, you're, you're we and they. So I'm good with you, but and I'm good with everybody. It's just I have a right to have that kind of opinion, and it's just unsettling to me. It really is, because I know who pays for all this. I'm on that list. <laughs> so I just, you don't need to explain anything. I've got my own feelings, so I'm good. Pass. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the $5.5 million is added into the project. The, the, the what would they do if they didn't have that? There. What would and happen? this also includes the, the pile and G building. I understand, but what would happen if they didn't have that? Oh, we would be in a world of hurt. Probably not have the shooting range. We would not be able to get the component. project done. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's a miracle that happened, isn't it? It's just a miracle. So I'm so thankful for it. You know, we got representatives that fight for our county. So, um, but that's all. Just pay me no mind. That's all I'm saying. We had a number of uh, legislators from around the state step in to help us get this well, done. I'm so thankful. Delegation. It just seems to never end. That's all I'm saying. Like yeah. everything else. So well, the the 5.5 million was specifically designated in the state budget for the firing range right. component. Right. So that's sort of an add-on to this project. Remember, they kept that one separate. So now that appropriation allows them to move forward with that piece. Miracle. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Any other commissioner have any comments? Just would point out we have multiple options on page three. Um, and I think it's our duty at this point to give some direction to our staff, to uh, Mr. Cole with Davenport, and to ACC. Um, so, commissioners, I'd like to give some comment on options one, two, and three among us. Well, I don't well, think let, me, can... let me just say that these these aren't it. I mean, you can land anywhere in between these. So, right. I don't want to, again, overcomplicate it, but these were examples. Direction. Am I correct in, in assuming that option one and two would not get them the funds they need to complete the project? Option one, you got to look at line three. Option one would net them, again, based on estimates, $15,790,000 compared to the nineteen three that they've shared this morning. Option two would give them $16.36 million. Which would be about $2 million short, or $3 million, $3 million. short. And then option three, based on these estimates, gives them what they've shared this morning plus a little bit. So the only one that makes any sense if we want to get the project done and finished and ready to go to bid is option three. Except that that does not take into account the 5.5. Yes, it does. Yeah, yes. it does include that. It doesn't include any federal. All right. Okay. Yeah. If they look at the monitor, they can see the breakout. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quick question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. King, we've talked a lot about the the safety center. Can you go into some detail about what the improvements of main Powell and G buildings are and what they're for? Uh, yes, sir. Um, the uh, third floor uh, is um, uh, on the uh, G building. That's where our library, <coughs> pardon me, 
That's where our library has existed for many years in a traditional sense with books and things of that nature, you know, which you might expect. Uh, what they're doing now is they're updating that, uh, you know, trying to get more technology involved in it, got, trying to get more meeting spaces for people uh, to interact with uh, not only lesson plans, but things of that nature, uh, lessons that they do, working in teams and that kind of thing. Um, the technology necessary to do that has changed. Uh, quite frankly, libraries across the country now <clears throat> are getting a lot more uh, accessible, if you will, or having much more access to electronic databases to where instead of having a few hundred thousand uh, inquiries, it may have three or four million uh, now uh, to help our students learn. Uh, to include helping our faculty teach. Uh, so it, it really increases the capacity uh, and it modernizes it, uh, it makes it, it better. I mean, uh, you have some libraries that you can go throughout the country and they're pretty dark and dingy and they're just old. And so this, uh, this opportunity uh, makes it more in kind with the, the things that are happening now in libraries and the way they're redesigned and so forth. Gives, in addition to that, gives additional classroom space. Uh, classroom spaces are, uh, again, more technical. Uh, they're, are, they've got to be more modernized. Uh, I was embarrassed whenever Mr. Carter, when I first got here, went to one of our facilities. We had a meeting uh, with faculty and staff there, and Mr. Carter, you will remember this, you were sitting at a broken table playing with the uh, uh, in a broken chair, uh, playing with broken edges of the table. I mean, that, that's, there's just no reason for that for a place like Alamance County. And so that it's, that's what we're trying to do is upgrade that so that these classrooms will be brought up to speed because students make a decision as to where they're going to go based on the qualities that they feel they'll encounter. And so that's why we need to update it. And, and it's just like it's no different than anything else. Things get older, they get worn out, so that's where we are. We just started a, I got a formal approval. This is the first semester for the licensed practical nursing program, which we have the CNA program. We have now the licensed uh, practical nursing program, and we have the uh, associate degree nursing program that leads to the registered nurse when they sit for the examination. So it gives you a full suite of uh, nursing programs, which is a dire need in not only this county, but every other county in the state and the country. And so it gives you a chance to get ahead of the game and, as opposed to trying to catch up. So that's a part of uh, what we're doing as well. Uh, so classrooms, uh, improved technologies, improved looks at what they what they're really uh, experiencing when they get to our college is what that's really about. Uh, and absolutely legitimate. I had somebody tell me one time, it's, it's really difficult to make new buildings out of old buildings, and it is. Uh, but if you don't do that, you, you lose relevance uh, over time. And unfortunately, we have uh, some in our, in our state uh, that have done just that. They've not reinvested in themselves. And quite frankly, they're suffering the consequences now because they have people going other places or they're not going at all uh, and so the net result of that is that the community is the one who loses um, in terms of the the question on, on do it now or, or do it later i mean the public service training center uh, safety training center the real number on that's 24 million uh, the taxpayers of north carolina helped modify that and reduce that by five and a half million and then you see the other elements on there as well. So I think it's been a, a judicious and an effective way in trying to get buy-in from a wide variety of constituents to help us with this important program in Alamance County. And once again, I would say that, uh, you know, I, I would hope that you're wanting to be number one as opposed to be a number three or four or ten, uh, you know, in the process. And that's what you have as a community from my perspective right now. You have that ability to move forward and be that number one, uh, certainly in this category, if you will do it. You're already beginning to do it in biotechnology. You're beginning to do it in so many other things that we do. Uh, this is just another step for you to move it a step further. Mr. Carter, uh, I'm saying we don't need a motion, but we need to give some direction. Right. And you had a comment. I do. Um, I don't know that anybody on this board has been more angry at different points. I know a lot of y'all haven't seen them all at all the different points in this process where we've... I mean, the most recent one was finding out we didn't have sufficient water pressure. Now, that should have been determined a long time ago, but for some reason the engineers that were coming up with this project did not determine that we didn't have sufficient water pressure going on a green level 
to support the dirty burn tower. It would have negatively impacted the citizens of Green Level if we'd built that tower there. I mean, it's just been one thing after another that has come up in this process. And uh, I know my fellow trustees felt the same way. I mean, we were not happy with the delays in the process. But where we are right now, Mr. Chairman, I would propose, and I, if a motion's needed, I'll make a motion out of it, that we go with option three, $18,935,000. That will complete the project. That will give us the ability to get it up and started and get our bids and have the money to cover it. Mr. Turner, do you have any comment as to that opinion? Well, uh, I said many months ago when ACC was asking for additional funds for the for the um, safety center, we, I think we moved some funds forward a few months ago, and I said then that I would support the, the issuance of bonds that ACC had requested based on what the voters approved, but not above that. And I think this this particular plan in option three asks for about three hundred sixty thousand dollars above what the voters approved. So uh, I would stay with what I'd said previously, which was supporting uh, uh, um, the total project funding of the limit of what the voters approved, which is eighteen point nine three five thousand dollars. So it's really option four. Um, and I would note that ACC in this request has abandoned some other projects that it, that were in the original request, um, which I see as a sort of a show of good faith there that, that you're amending what you're asking for to stay close to what the voters have approved, not completely. So I would amend it to option four. Mr. Lash. Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. D Turner. Uh, if the number is 18935, that's the number you get. You don't have to talk about it any longer. But I want to ask any I want to ask my fellow commissioners, how much did this public training facility cost when it first came out? Anyone remember? Twelve. Twelve million dollars. Mm -hmm. You just gotta scratch your head and ask yourself, how does it double in three years? Five years. I'm saying when they came to us and told us how much the public training center was going to cost, it was 12 million bucks. Yeah. Here it is, three years later, 24. How is that possible? How is that possible that inflation rate can be 26.7 percent a year? How? If you can't answer that question, then the answer is, option three is not where you want to go. You, Mr. Carty, it seems like you're having a difficult time. 12 to 24, it's a doubler. And I said three years because that's how long I've been sitting the in the seat. The number's the number. How? But it, why isn't the question being asked is how can this go double in three years? Mr. Lash, I'll tell you is one who just... rate ain't that high, and lumber ain't that high, and steel's <laughs> not that high, so I don't know how you can actually tell me that you know... Where the twelve million dollars came from? I can't because see. you know, with, after you guys spending twelve million bucks and the school system spending twenty million dollars, before long my taxpayers ain't gonna have any more money left. And I know this was a bond that was voted on. I understand that. That's why I agree with Mr. Turner. If your number is eighteen nine three five, that's what you should get. And I hope you can get everything that you told the voters five years ago you were going to get done for them. But as we, Mr. Turner, just suggested, no, you're not. That's why the taxpayers are scratching their head, asking themselves, why is it and only in the education system do these things increase exponential? Exponential. They ask themselves, how can this be in the education system, but not over in companies that actually are for profit? Because I think we both know the answer to that. You don't have to look out for profits. They just show up. The state, the federal, the taxpayers of Alamance County provide the money for this. But it just seems like they never, ever get a, a good, thorough inv investigation of why these things are increasing at such an alarming rate. 
And if anyone under, does understand, take number 71 and divide it by three, and that's the interest rate that you're actually saying that this project has cost it. And, and I know it's not true. It, it's, it's, inflation's not that high. I understand, and I, I, I share your, your <coughs> frustrations and your concerns. I, I understand that. Uh, that's what we're trying to do is to get it before it goes any higher uh, or any further. I think we're prepared to do that right now with your support. And if we can get that support on uh, specifically, if, if, if you can see yourself uh, doing it, going with uh, item three, then we'll be able to launch this thing and get it done for you. Uh, I can tell you it's one who just built a $50 million facility. Uh, we had inflation rates at one time with my builders uh, that were anywhere from 20 and in one month 48% on one particular category. I, I, I did not believe it myself, and so I went in and I forced the issue, and that's what the accuracy was. I'm not saying the same thing as here, I don't know, but I know in the one I just built that it was. So. Uh, frustrating as can be, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're trying to do the best for Alamance County that we can do for you, and we're ready to do that now uh, if you just support us on this. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm good. Comment, please, Mr. Chairman. Uh, back in, I think it was early summer, either probably June, we were told that the uh, escalation rate, if we couldn't get a, a commitment done by August, End of August was it was going to increase was going to start increasing again based on the most recent estimate we had from a builder at that time was going to start increasing at a rate of about ninety thousand dollars a month. How do you not know about the water? Good question. Who we makes? Still don't I mean, know how, how do you, you not know about the water? About the, water. the engineers should have known that a long time ago when they didn't. Miss Thompson, you the next one I was going to. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. I didn't made enough comments. <laughs> I just, I just see this is just, it's just, a ne a, a nothing. Okay, I agree with Mr. Turner um, and Mr. Lashley. So, Mr. Cole, I think that would be your direction, which, which is option number four, which is not on our. Right, and that that is to to net the eighteen. Okay. Point nine three five million, right. including the cost of issuance. Yes. And then you got that plus five million, or is that five million yeah. in that? Five I'm really obsessed about that five million. <laughs> the, 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 That's not part of the borrowing. Yeah, it's <clears throat> the the eighteen point nine. That, when you say including, my my thought that that was the net when we're all finished. And that was mine. The net need. Well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that will help taxpayers. But also help ACC. Uh, Mr. Turner, I think you're dead on point. Any other comments from this board? To include issues. Yeah. Okay. We thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gold. I've been informed of my fellow commissioners we're taking a 10 minute break. <laughs> we're back in session. Okay, Ms. Evans. Hello, Commissioners. Um, before you today, I am bringing a request um, that we received from Alamance Community College, which would allow us to pay their PAYGO capital amount uh, at the beginning of the year instead of receiving that as a monthly allotment. What this will allow them to do is have cash flow up front to accomplish their projects. Should the board approve this, um, they've already received 134000 we would transfer the remaining balance of $401,999.99 to the community college. In discussion, it, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Unanimous. So now you're allowed to leave, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Miss Solvay. But you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Right. Good morning. Is it still? Yes. Good morning. Um, I'm Sky Sullivan. I'm the director of the Family Justice Center. I have with me today Dieter Betts, the executive director of Family Abuse Services, which is our nonprofit service provider. Thank you at the Family Justice Center, our victim service provider. 
So first, we're here for the Domestic Violence Awareness Month proclamation. Domestic Violence Awareness Month started October 1, and um, runs through the month is a great time for us to talk about those impacted by domestic violence and those who lose their lives due to domestic violence. And I, I don't know who has the proclamation. I have the proclamation. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you to read it, Had if you people. will. Uh, and then we're going to have a nice motion to approve it. <laughs> Thank you. Want to do it together? Sure. All right. Alamance County Board of Commissioners Proclamation Domestic mm -hmm. Violence Awareness Month. Whereas domestic violence is the willful, willful intimidation, physical assault, battery, sexual assault, and other abusive behavior as part of a systemic pattern of power and control perpetrated by one intimate partner against another, and? Whereas in the United States, one in four women and one in 10 men experience sexual violence, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner during their lifetime, and? Whereas domestic violence does not discriminate and is prevalent in every community, people of any race, age, gender, sexuality, religion, education level, nationality, or economic status can be a victim, and? Whereas in response to multiple murder-suicides and a community issue of domestic violence, Family Abuse Services of Alamance County was incorporated in 1985 to serve victims and their children with vital safety services, and? Whereas only a coordinated community effort will put a stop to this heinous crime. The Family Justice Center of Alamance County opened its doors in 2010 and provides one-stop shop services for victims of interpersonal violence, including domestic violence, stalking, sexual assault, child abuse, human trafficking, and elder abuse. Under one roof, professionals from different disciplines, including law enforcement, social services, victim services, nonprofits, and other government organizations work together to, to provide consolidated and coordinated safety, legal, and social aid to individuals and families in need, and? Whereas the Family Justice Center and its partners have served over 1,300 victims over 1,800 times so far in 2023, and? Whereas there have been 51 domestic violence homicides in North Carolina so far in 2023, already surpassing the numbers for 2022, and? Whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing violence and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy <laughs> and assistance to victims, and? Whereas Alamance County has a moral obligation to work to prevent domestic violence, address its brutal and destructive effects, and make ending domestic violence a local priority. And the last part is where you all declare, <laughs> which I'm not going to read. I, I think <clears throat> from this point forward, we'll have these two ladies come back with all resolution. <laughs> uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Alamance County Board of Commissioners, do hereby uh, proclaim October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Alamance County and urge all citizens to actively support the work being done toward the elimination of domestic violence. This is the second day of October 2023, and we better pass it. I've already signed it. <laughs> uh, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have two seconds. <laughs> uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'd like to add, unfortunately, almost every family, sometime in their years, will have the need of your services. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is the puppet show running? since COVID. Have y'all got that back in the school? We have just signed a MOU with them about a month or so ago. So we're in the process of getting it implemented. Okay. All right. So I and we'll have a domestic violence uh, opening is November 10th. It will complement or help you guys as well. So we look forward to that. When's the... the You're talking about rhythm? the Virgin Center. Diverge, what did I say? Domestic, domestic violence. violence. Oh, excuse me. It's okay. We uh, said domestic diverge. violence about 100 times. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your can lights. So I, th I think that's November 10th, is it not? Yeah. 
I'm not sure what you're referring to. Okay, there's a ribbon cutting that I've received a notice about. Uh, I'm on the buy award. That's so nice. I'll have to check. Oh, is it a tour? It's a tour. Okay, maybe it's a tour. All I'm right. not sure. Okay. All right. Please, if I can, after my legs were cut on Friday, and we'll stand. Thank you so much. Thank we you. We appreciate Thank it. You. We also have the next item on the agenda, so we're not, she's going to run, but we're not, I'm not going to go anywhere. Um, all right, so I'm happy to introduce uh, two guests for today to go over our first domestic violence fatality review team report. So I have Linda Bruton from Family Abuse Services and Corey Ellison from Via Health. They are our co-chairs on our domestic violence fatality review team for Alamance County. So just as a quick recap, um, you all voted to approve the creation of this fatality review team in 2021, making us the fifth county in North Carolina to establish a team. Um, as far as I know, we are the third county to publish our report. Um, so this is uh, pretty unique to Mecklenburg, Raleigh, and um, Alamance County. And so what we do as a team is we review homicides. We do an intensive two-day review per homicide in domestic violence and then come up with facts, findings, and recommendations. So I'm actually going to let our co-chairs present this. And I'll give... Nobody's going to reach for it. <laughs> <laughs> you made the mistake of buttoning your jacket. That's why she handed it. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> So good morning, uh, still morning. Um, as Sky shared, my name is Linda Bruton. Corey Ellison. And we are going to go over the data, um, the observations, the findings, and some successes that we have had um, through our uh, domestic violence fatality review. Um, so in the past 20 years, approximately 21 cases of homicide um, due to or related to domestic violence has happened in Alamance County. Of those 21, 17 were related to intimate partner violence. Four of those homicides were where they, we had a um, bystander, friend, or relative that intervened during the process. Um, and this, in these cases, majority of the perpetrators were male. Um, it is noteworthy that um, the statistics for this homicide, these homicide cases where the victim, uh, I'm sorry, did not include where the victim was wounded, was severely injured, or um, later died due to the complications of the incident. And it does not also include where the victim potentially later <coughs> died by suicide. Um, of these cases in the state of North Carolina, not only in Alamance County, 77% of homicides due to domestic violence were uh, including guns. We did have some critical findings um, within um, the domestic, vi domestic violence fatality <laughs> review. Um, some of them were that due to support or due to mistrust with law enforcement, victims were less likely to reach out to law enforcement, but more likely to reach out to their family and friends of support who also did not have knowledge or resources or access to resources um, to assist with um, finding safe shelter, um, finding um, sa or getting safety planning, anything that included the assistance of getting the, the the victim what they needed during this process. Um, typically, there was a history of violence between the perpetrator and the victim um, that resulted in where the perpetrator was losing the sense of power or control in the relationship. Um, in many cases, law enforcement did come out prior to the the incidences and one issue that we also have seen where law enforcement has struggled in some point to find out who was the predominant predominantly um, or predominant aggressor in the in the situation and that also included where we well it also led to the victim having less trust you know with law enforcement during the process both victims and offenders have had um, substantial um, trauma or traumatic histories, um, traumatic pasts, it could be you know, with their childhood or could be with uh, different relationships, which included substance use or ac lack of access to re available resources. This, do this does not mean that this was the cause of the domestic violence, but this was absolutely an aggravating factor. Um, 
And as I shared earlier, guns were largely involved in uh, the use of the death. In addition to these findings, we have seen that victims prior to their death very limitedly reached out to a victim service agency. Um, and I want to say it is actually 4% of victims um, that were reaching out. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll jump in with recommendations. So based on uh, uh, what we found, we recognize the need for improved state, legisl state legislation for updated laws and make services more available to all individuals. Um, as uh, Linda mentioned, a lot of time people are reaching out to family members versus um, formal organizations, formal supports. Um, people have a general mistrust a lot of time for formal supports. Um, and so improved state legislation to update laws and make services more available would allow for people to gain a little bit more trust. Um, also outreach programs to our community agencies. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times outreach programs to churches, um, to some of those more community supports would, would bridge more of that trust with our formal supports that have more of the resources. Um, <clears throat> we need a more standardized protocol across the county for public and private entities. Um, a lot of times what we've noticed is a lot of times um, there's a lot of information out there but there's firewalls, right? So mm -hmm. um, the person touched DSS, but law enforcement doesn't know what DSS knows. DSS doesn't know what we, um, and so being able to do more of that um, information sharing and putting that in protocols. Um, uh, emphasis on, um, well, I would say community engagement. Um, pro prevent more prevention programs um, that includes for st state, for schools and for youth for K-12 programs. I know um, Ms. Pamela mentioned um, the puppet show, getting more to teach kids more um, healthy relationships, um, teaching especially more support for kids who might have witnessed um, domestic violence. Um, and I think that is it. Um, one of the things I think that Sky also mentioned is we are also one of the three that are still going right now. So there were five happening, but we are one of the three that's going on right now. So Alamance County is actually doing some really um, progressive things across the state as well. Um, I believe we also have uh, one of the tools that we utilize here as far as... The lap screening. The lap screening that isn't used all, all across the state that's um, really innovative here in Alamance. So what I'll say last is, um, so we are seeing dwindling resources in interpersonal violence fields, victim service agencies, law enforcement, government agencies, and an increased need for these services. Um, so what we also recommend is that anyone who knows any funders, like the Governor's Crime Commission or anyone like that, um, that they prioritize basic services for these victims. Right now, service demand at the Family Justice Center is higher than it's ever been, but the budget for our victim service agencies is lower than it's been in the past 10 years. And so those are really hard things to reconcile. I'll also say that funding usually doesn't prioritize prevention. So a lot of these homicides occurred with people who experienced trauma as children. So these offenders who, who eventually become lethal, um, either witness domestic violence as a child, um, or they had a, a death in their family due to domestic violence and they repeated that as an adult. But one great thing is that Alamance County does a lot of things really well and a lot of things where we're leaders in the state for what we do and that's just really exciting. Um, so in 1990, Alamance County established a domestic violence advocacy committee that was not required at the time. That was just leaders coming together saying we need this and now it's called Victims Advocacy Council of Alamance, which is still running. Um, Thanks to a lot of community partners, including Family Abuse Services, Law Enforcement, DA's Office, Judges, Department of Social Services, and the Alamance County Government, we opened the first Family Justice Center in North Carolina in 2010. Um, we are one of five teams, and I believe one of three who have published a report. We have served over 13,000 clients over 17,000 times since we opened our doors. 
Um, we were the first in the nation to implement electronic filing for 50B restraining orders. Alamance County was one of 10 counties nationwide to receive a grant to um, look into the issue of elder abuse, which I know I've said many times, it, the age is 50 plus, uh, and we do have a, a large 50 plus population in Alamance County. We are using the, the lethality assessment uh, screening tool with law enforcement on scene to try to identify cases that could potentially become um, a homicide in the future. We have a professional culture of open communication uh, and very effective multidisciplinary teams, teams like Justice Advisory Council. I talk to communities all the time that don't have something like Jack, and it's just really great that we have something like that functioning here. Um, and we are an active participant in the North Carolina State Review Team Collaborative, which is pretty new in its um, founding, but something we're trying to enact some policy changes and statewide changes. So that was a lot of information. I think I stuck to, to 10 minutes or less on that. Do you have any questions for our team? Just want to acknowledge <coughs> Kim Robertson, who was heavy duty, mm -hmm. and particularly all kind, the Domestic Violence Center and electronic filing and so many yep. of the things you mentioned. Yep, and he still shows up to check up on me, make sure that <laughs> FJC is running how, how it Not should be. Not surprised. <laughs> Just thank you for your presentation. Really enjoyed it. Thank Very you. good. Yes. So you. we uh, only have to do a report once every three years. This is our first one, and hopefully we'll get another one to you in three years. Mm -hmm. um, we have sent this to the Domestic Violence Commission, and we'll be sending it to the Governor's Crime Commission, hopefully advocating for some changes in laws, specifically around strangulation, what class of felony it is, and things like that. Um, if there's ever opportunities for the board to sign any kind of resolutions or any kind of support for some of the things we're going for, we'll bring that back in front of you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baker. Oh, well, let me also mention before you guys escape, if you've never been by the Domestic Violence Center, I don't know whether you can tour that or not, but it's such a wonderful, not only building facility, but what you guys do. Thank you. Yes, I. anytime someone wants to tour the Family Justice Center, I'm happy to give that tour. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I just want to provide you with an update on uh, the assignments we were given last uh, last meeting, uh, really to determine the best way to get a complete assessment of the roofs and the HVAC systems of county buildings and school system buildings. Um, so I reached out to 10 different companies, and those ranged from architecture firms, roofing contractors, HVAC contractors of different varieties. Um, and just for review, I asked them to inspect inventory and assess the conditions of all the roofs and HVACs. That's 83 total buildings between the school system and the county. So it's a big assignment. Um, asked them to provide a list of the needed improvements for both roofs, roofs and HVACs, including the humidity controls, just make, what do we need to do to make sure these buildings are, are safe and efficient. And I asked them to provide a, a prioritization schedule for those repairs um, over time. So I got four bids back for, the, for, for that work, and it ranged from um, big to small, right? So I'm gonna kinda just go over what I got back um, in that relatively compressed time frame, it's difficult to do an apples to apples here. You really just call them and say, hey, give me this, and you, and you take what you get. So I want to go over what I got back and uh, discuss the best, best path forward there. Um, so I got bids from architecture firms, folks that we've worked with before, do a great job. It is really a complete service there, and the, the bid I got back was $960,000 for that. Nine, or 60. 960. And what does that mean? Like, what are they going to be doing? So they're going to, essentially, an architecture firm is going to hire an HVAC guy and going to hire a roof guy because they're different people. Um, <coughs> and they're going to work with them. The engineers, get, the architects are going to be on the team. <coughs> they're going to sort of work for us and parse through the information they're getting back from the roof and HVAC guys, give us their opinions on how to best move forward. So that is an exhaustive review um, involving an architect that's going to be uh, sort of an in intermediary between those folks um, and help us give us the advice we need to move forward. So, so, these, 
So that firm was R and D Architects. Uh, these would that would in, the architectural firm would include these would be engineers that would be hired by the architectural firm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah, they're essentially going to work with the same folks that we reached out to directly. And right. so um, of those other bids we got back, um, I got one HVAC company uh, that was interested in that work, and that was a total of $452,000 was their proposal, HVACs only. The roofing companies, I got more variety, uh, so I got between $82,000. Um, all the way up to $295,000, three different bids in there. So the third bid was $168,000. Um, and part of the reason for the diversity in costs there is they're proposing to do different levels of work, to be honest with you. For the $82,000, it's a very simple, we're going to go up on that roof, we'll see if there's holes in it, um, you know, give you an assessment of the roof by looking at it. Uh, but that didn't include taking core samples. It didn't include peeling a section of the roof back, seeing how many patches there have been on there, how many times have you laid over it. It's not really a complete, here's what you need to do to move forward assessment. It's kind of just, is your roof leaking? Is there something obvious here we need to fix? Um, so a lot of uh, breadth in those numbers. Um, what was the other number? 82. Sorry, 82, 168, Thank you. and 295. Um, and pretty much all of those companies are between four and eight months to deliver um, that assessment. I think that's probably a little too long for what we're trying to do. Um, so one path forward um, is just to take one of these bids and roll with it. I think probably a better path forward is to take a couple weeks uh, talk to these companies individually and try and make sure that we're getting, we know exactly the product that we're getting. Um, maybe address that timeline a little bit by prioritizing certain projects, putting some off a little bit. The, the critical part here is making sure roofs that are actually leaking, number one, and as any obvious problems we have. Number two is all, all the schools get done to make sure we know what we're looking at for next summer by humidity season. And some of our other th buildings are important and are important to have on the prioritization list, but they're not the first things we need to do. So I think we can get our time frame a little bit better for, to get the information we need to know. I think we can dial in those numbers a little bit and importantly, dial in the service a little bit to make sure we're getting what we need out of this as opposed to Who a real HVAC bid from? The, the single HVAC bid we got was from system contractors systems contractor. So they put in a joint bid with WX tight to do a roofing package. Um, but their portion of that, their HVAC costs were 452. And where are they from? They're not Elmas County. I, that's a good question. A lot of companies, they're all local ish. I think they're probably Greensboro, but I don't quite remember on that company. Yeah. Um, so happy to answer any questions about those numbers or, or take some direction on moving forward. And who were the roofers? Uh, got bids back from Baker Roofing, REI, and WX Tight. Can you identify Baker? them by cost? Sure. Baker Roofing was $82,500. Um, REI was $295,759. And WX Tight was $168,000. Zero WX, fifteen. I beg your pardon. WX Tight is the name of this company. WX Kite. Tight. W X T I T E, and they pronounce it W X Tight because I asked. So. <laughs> I recognize Baker because they did uh, Broadview and Cummins. Excellent company. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, uh, again, not a slight on Baker. I think they're capable of doing whatever we ask them to do. But the proposal we got back from them for their inspections was, was a fairly cursory inspection. Uh, and I don't think it includes all the information that we're going to need. If, they're gonna, if they say there's a problem with the roof at Broadview, and I'm, I'm hesitant to make up a school because I don't know the schools, but they I just made up a school. Don't be saying anything. I don't know what's going on with Broadview's roof. They're good. <laughs> well, whichever roof, if, if they say, oh, there's a problem here, we're going to need to know, okay, has that roof been patched? Have we put another layer on that thing? What is the fix? And this quick assessment is not, I don't think, going to get us all that information. 
I think we need more, I would suspect, right? I, then we'll do what we asked them to do. I think just on that time frame, um, we got back their best guess of what they, you know, what they assumed we wanted, and they weren't always apples to apples. And but two weeks will give you the time to really assess and negotiate. That would be my hope, is in the next two weeks I can have individual conversations with these folks um, and say, okay, here's what we really wanted. What can you do that for? Um, how much is, you know, what, what's the time frame? Can we get a little quicker on some of these projects, a little slower on the others? Um, so ideally I would bring, be able to bring you back a complete cost and we'll see about a contract in a couple of weeks, but we get some direction. Um, a better idea moving forward than these really broad numbers. We would also request at least that you evaluate each company as well. Sure, absolutely. And, and some of these companies have a lot of knowledge about our school system because uh, they've been working on it for years. Some of them are brand new to it. Um, so again, that's some reason for this, the numbers being all over the place because some folks knew what they were getting into and some didn't. Wasn't Baker the one that was recommended by Mr. Bass? He mentioned their name. They are a big company, and again, I think they're he capable. He say they would be really low on the assessment side. Okay. Well, Baker has well-known reputation as positive. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, what I knew about them. Mr. Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple thoughts. We, we talked last meeting about really two tasks. One task was a, a quick evaluation, particularly of school buildings where, where we knew there was a roofing problem. And that's probably closer to what the, the Baker proposal reflects. Yeah. Quick hit, uh, are there things that we know that we can fix immediately? Second task, long-term, deep evaluation. Um, and so I think that the best approach would be reflecting those two tasks. Um, when talking about four to eight months, I do think that's, that's long term. I, I wonder though, you know, they could do a report out. Like if you prioritize schools, you could focus on schools, do a report out on schools, or even a report out as you, as you learn about each school, <laughs> which would speed up that process. Uh, probably could use uh, information that, that the school system has already in, with, with records at particular schools, fixes Correct. at particular schools. That could speed up the process too. Um, so I think there's a way to manage this to get quicker than the four to eight months and do those two tasks. And I think we really ought to ask for the for both when we're, when we're evaluating this. So the Baker proposal, which again was a simpler inspection, was still a four month timeline. Um, so, and I think that's a reflection of the, just the amount of buildings that we're talking about. Well, there, we don't, there's not active leaks in every school building. Correct. I mean, I think we we, we funded, you know, design requests for Western Elements, Western High, I think we ever Jordan, we know those are issues. Focus there. Is there anything else, you know, Greg Cook, is there anything else you're seeing a problem? Yeah. Yeah, well, look, let's, okay, well, let's go over here. I and mean, that, that should be quick. Yeah, I think so. And I, so I'm not sure that because of that reason, I'm not sure that the, the two-tiered report is 100% necessary because I think we can... Let's prioritize these 10 places and get a report out on those immediately. And a, a report as you go scheme, I think, is what we need. And that way we're getting the immediate information we need. And it just builds upon that over the long term. So I think you're going to, the cost here is getting guys up on roofs. Uh, it just costs a lot of money to go to every school to walk up around. So I think if you're asking for both a quick assessment and a long term assessment that might involve different companies, you're going to incur a yeah. lot of unnecessary costs that way versus just prioritizing the ones that you need from uh, a company saying go up on that roof one time but just do these first and give us a report immediately thereafter. Hopefully we can have that in a month or two uh, for the problem areas or the, the priority schools and then we'll just report as we go. But it's certainly something I can ask about. Well, you may be duplicating efforts too if there's a design and process for those three schools that is, that is the long-term fix. Right. We would skip, uh, we would skip those, right, okay. the ones that have already been designed and, uh, unless, and planned. Unless there's a, uh, you know, a, a, a one-day evaluation process that says, oh, you know, fix this thing. And so I think that's a conversation. We wouldn't want to duplicate efforts, but um, I, I guess there's different needs at different places, and as long as we have yeah. a plan that accommodated for that, 
at the same time we're getting information as quickly as we can about each place, I think that's the way that we ought to go. Right. Mr. Horn, I'll just go down the line. Um, I, I think uh, I w I've been thinking about the, the process that we went through when I was in banking, and we had, we didn't, principals, you know, I, I wasn't a school principal, but I managed multiple facilities, and we didn't do those inspections ourselves. The bank engaged a contractor who came around on a regular basis, and I mean, they would actually come in on a scheduled basis and change out all the ballast and light bulbs. They'd come in on a regular basis and change out all the filters, and they'd come in on a regular basis and do heat and air uh, servicing on a regular basis and do roofing checks. We had a lot of flat top roofs. We had hip roofs. We had all kinds of roofs. And they, they, different, you know, the company would come in and do the work. And would, honestly, unless we had a problem with something, we didn't have to deal with anything at all. I mean, we just, they would let us know they were going to be there so that we weren't looking at security issues, and that would be it. Um, I think there's got to be a really smart way for us to find a way to make sure this doesn't happen again, and this is the beginning of that process. Um, I'm not sure which one of these is the best way to go, but large companies that can hit all the schools, all the buildings in the county and check them out, service them when they're needed to be serviced, and create a budget for us. So we go into budget time next year, we kind of got an idea of what we're looking at. I think that's kind of where we want to be. Um, Ms. Thompson. I just don't want water coming out of one. <laughs> so, whoever, you know, Bob the Builder is, just get it done, because this is crazy. Kids deserve better. Mr. Oh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> it appears, it appears to me that, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I've, I've been talking to the maintenance folks for the county buildings, and I, I think I mentioned this to Mr. Carter last time, um, when I first became a commissioner, uh, hey, good. We went around and did a tour of some buildings, and I got a chance to talk to the maintenance folks and see, and just ask them to uh, take a look at our buildings, uh, specifically with roofs, and to see when we would need to do another building. And I was told five years. Well, I just spoke to the gentleman last week, Charles, super nice guy, R really like his input and insight because he's got tons of years of experience doing this job. He did say that. The county buildings, the only one that he thought that needed to be moved up, and this was the one of the ones I was telling you was a five-year deal. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're coming into finishing the third year, going to the fourth year, and he just told me last week that he has moved the sheriff's uh, the building up. I don't know if it's the detention center, but he's moved it yes, up a year. Chair. Yeah. So, you know, when I'm looking at this uh, cost for the 83 buildings, I'm just wondering if... We would be we would be okay instead of funding the the portion for the county buildings is to focus on the school buildings, and I think that would probably knock that number from eighty three down to in the in the forties maybe. I'm just thinking out loud here because I'm just thinking that w I understand why you want to have the county buildings have, have put some eyes on. Them. But I believe that we have the f folks that are responsible for that seem to be doing what they should be doing. And if you're taking a building that you looked at three years ago and you're moving it up a year because you think that it may need to be done, that gives me confidence in the folks in the county side of the ledger are doing what they should be doing. What we're concerned about is the other side of the ledger with the school system maybe some things were not done the proper way or need to be more focused on going forward so make sure you don't have that happen again. My question to you is, in your professional opinion, do you think that we could focus just on the school system buildings and less on the county buildings? It's just, it's, I'm spitballing here. I'm so I think it's reasonable to focus on the school system buildings first. I absolutely think that. I, I will tell you, um, we are in a little bit of a better position with the county. One reason is because we have way less roofs. 
Yeah. Uh, it's just, and it's not 50 50. Okay. And the m number of buildings is, but from a square footage standpoint, it's the, the school system has <laughs> way more to deal with, way more flat roofs to say, Western High School is a building. Yeah, but there's probably nine roofs out there. You know, we don't know. Um, they know. I don't know. <laughs> so I think we can wait. I, we, and we have all of our roofs in the county on a capital schedule. We know when we want to replace them. Um, but quite honestly, that schedule is not based on a routine assessment of, of condition. There's a part of that, but it's really based on when we put it on, when we think the warranty's up, when it's going to start leaking. We don't have a great sense of where every one of our roofs is. And the jail we moved up, and we're moving it up because it's leaking. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know. If you're getting to the point where you wait and see what's leaking and then you move it up, you're not quite where you need to be as a process. I think that's where we are. So I think we can push push the county buildings till later. If we end up with a comprehensive priority list that includes only schools, we will fund only schools for the next however long it takes to get through that list, and then we'll be in the same spot from a county perspective is my fear. So I would think long term I'd prefer to have a comprehensive list that there may not be a county building that needs to be done in the next five years on there. Great. Um, but we'll know that and they'll be on one list. But it, it costs money. So understand the, the trade off. Thank you. Just can I just add to that an um, um as many times as the inmates have gotten really ticked off and clogged up the toilets and it's ran through the ceiling, has the jail been tested for mold? I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I'd like to know the answer to that. Yeah. Eventually. I'm just curious because that would make sense when things are running through the city. There have been some roof leaking problems yeah. over there. We've addressed them. Ongoing issues trying to make sure that they're patched right. and not actively leaking, but it's time okay. over there just for curious. a... Yeah. I would encourage us to give Mr. Baker and team, uh, Ms. York and team, so forth, two weeks and come back to us in two weeks and uh, hopefully have some hard numbers. Okay. Or do you agree? About it. Great. Thank well, you. Your sentence is two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baker. Two week job security. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Brian. You. Okay. County manager. Nothing to report, sir. Best report all day. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Ms. Thompson, we'll start off with you with Commissioner's comments, if you have any. I don't have any. Just just hope the balloon festival turned out okay. I know outside events, <clears throat> anything is so dependent on weather. And I know we did have some rain that weekend, so I hope they did well. That's a lot of work. Thank you. Mr. Lashley. I have none. Thank you. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Really just a question. I know we put in the budget um, some funds for the implementation of a salary study beginning November 1st. Just checking in on where we are with that and what we think the deadline might be to sure. have some solid information. A consultant has been selected to try to work on this issue with us. <laughs> We're uh, assessing one-third of the organization. I don't have a firm deadline yet. I'm thinking December 1 is probably closer. Um, but I don't know that for sure. So as soon as I have some um, firm dates, I'll, br I'll bring an assessment or an update back to the board with that. Yeah, I think we don't want to lose speed with that. We don't. You're right. Mr. Carter. I don't have any comments. Um, yeah. The only comment I have is, I, uh, Mr. Baker, I think probably the schools need some prior. They have a lot more buildings, a lot more leaks. And I think we've been much more active on maintenance than possible in the past history of the school system. Uh, school system. Uh, appreciate, Dr. Butler, you being here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And that he's feeling better. Oh, Much absolutely. Better. <laughs> we hope we didn't make you sick the other day. <laughs> uh, not, not this time. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mr. Stevens. I don't have anything for the open session, but I do have two closed session motions for the board to consider. Um, first, pursuant North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, I ask the board move into closed session and consult with an attorney employed by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will seek instructions on the handling or settlement of administrative matters. 
Secondly, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A5, I ask the board move into closed session in order to instruct the body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken on or on behalf of a body negotiating potential purchase of the real property owned by Todd Smith, described as parcel IDs 145809 and 145819 for potential use by the county for expanded office space. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further comments? There being none, uh, all in favor of going into play session at this point, signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Back in session now. Uh, Mr. Stevens, I think uh, you yes. have a. Yes, I would request that I would request the board make a motion to spend from the fund balance to pay for MAI appraisals on the ten properties that were discussed previously by Mr. Akins in the session presentation to you uh, to get valuations on those properties based on that MAI appraisal. And I'll make the motion. Second. In discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Nothing uh, further for me. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. So second. second. Can you make an action? <laughs> what made the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.